From the Skyterra Wellness Retreat, this is the Inspired Intentions Podcast, where we help people build the skills and mindset to live a healthy life. Hello, Inspired Intentions listeners. Have you ever had an appointment with someone and they're late and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, I had a flat tire? Well, this is funny because (laughs) our guest on today's podcast, one of our guests, I should say, was about five minutes late to the podcast, which honestly happens with me. It happens with Alan. It's not a big deal. She texted us to say, I have a flat tire. And then she sent us a photo of the flat tire, (laughs) which I was like, that is above and beyond. (laughs) And I asked her if that was like the standard photo she kept every time. (laughs) You send that picture every time you need to be a little late. (laughs) Yes. That would would work. It would, yeah. So now that we've heard her voice, let me, I'm going to introduce you, Kirsten. So this is Kirsten Moorhart. She's the Recreation Director at Skyterra Young Adult. Good morning. Hey, everyone. And her tire is repaired? It's in the process. I took one of the work vehicles. That's on campus. Okay. Okay. Nice. And then, of course, everybody knows Alan Broyhill. Hi, Alan. Hey, everyone. Hey, Kirsten. Thanks for being on here. Yeah. Thanks um, for having me, Rachel. Oh, thanks for having me, Alan. Yeah. Great when we're both on the mic together. So our topic today is recreation and adventure, which is a very important part of both of our programs, both at Skyterra Wellness and at Skyterra Young Adult. Alan, of course, it, among the many hats that he wears, is the recreation director here at Skyterra. And Kirsten is the recreation director at Skyterra Young Adult. So we're going to talk about recreation and adventure in both of those programs today, what each looks like, um, how they're the same, how they're different. And then we're going to give you listeners some tips for getting outside, some, yeah. some tips from our outdoor experts here on how to get outside and really enjoy the great outdoors no matter where you are. Um, Kirsten, would you, since this is your first time on the Inspired Intentions podcast, could you introduce yourself to our listeners and give us your background and your experience? Yeah. So as Rachel said, my name is Kirsten Moorhart. I grew up in LaPorte, Pennsylvania, small town of 320 people. So you probably never heard of it. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I got my degree in Recre- outdoor Recreation Management and Community Commercial Management from Lock Haven University. Go Bald Eagles. Yeah. Um, and from there, you know, the cool thing about Rec was I was able to do a lot of seasonal work. So I spent a lot of time out in Jacksonville, Wyoming, mm. um, living my lifelong dream of being a ski bum and then working for a raft company in the summer. Um, worked at some summer camps. Um Worked as a wilderness guide here in North Carolina for a while, too. And, yeah, just kind of beep off my way around until I landed here at Wellness about a year and a half ago. Awesome. And we're so happy to have you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Ellen, I do feel like it's been a while since we've talked about your experience He's looking at me with wide eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan and I actually started at Skyterra around the same time. So mm-hmm. almost five years ago, maybe yeah. five years for you. It's almost our five-year birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, can you share some of your outdoor experience with us? Yeah. Kirsten and I were talking about this a minute ago. Um, and Kirsten, I didn't know that about you. That's super cool that you mm-hmm. uh, ski bum, uh, raft guide. Uh, Three that's years. Really, that's really <laughs> cool. That's you know, I started out uh, a little bit different. I didn't go to school for outdoor recreation, but it's always been a part of my life. I um, started guiding very young, guiding fly fishing, uh, and I found my way into working outside and guiding other things. Uh, growing up on a farm, <laughs> it's kind of part of your life. Being outside, you don't have a choice, but uh, you you know you find a way to uh, do something different. And I found fly fishing. And then that led me into my guiding experience and career here. And uh, I started, yeah, five, five years ago. Uh, I feel like our recreation program was a little baby here at that yeah, time. And you've we've grown it, for we've sure. grown it. Yeah. A lot. I think one of the things I really admire about both of you is, um, when you take time off, when you take your vacation days from Skyterra, you do outdoor things, which I think is really <laughs> cool. It just talks about how much you love it. Yeah. Mm. You got to do your own thing, too, if you yeah. want to stay loving it. Yeah, I yeah, love that's that. that's very true. It can get a little tiring to do it for other people, even though it's, like, great to bring that joy to their life and get them to, ex- like, live in it and experience it. But you got to take time for yourself, too, if you want to stay bringing that joy, I feel like. Mm-hmm. What didn't uh, Rachel Carey talked about that in her arts podcast yeah. in a parallel plane of, 
you know, she loves theater, but she has to have another creative outlet. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So we've introduced you both. So let's get into it. My first question, and I'm, we're going to ping pong these. So Alan, I'm going to give you this question first. So what does the recreation and adventure pillar look like at Skyterra Wellness? And um, just for listeners, if this maybe this is the first podcast that you're listening to, Skyterra Wellness, is, we're located in Pisgah Forest, North Carolina. Um, our campus serves adults. Um, minimum stay is seven days, and folks come to lear- learn skills to change their lives in a healthy way. And then we have our Skyterra Young Adult Campus, which is separate, located about 15 or 20 minutes away. And it takes the same pillars of wellness that we teach to our adult population and has tweaked it for a a somewhat younger population, typically ages 18 to 29. So Alan is with our adult Skyterra Wellness, Kirsten, our young adult. So after all of that, Alan, what does it look like at Skyterra Wellness? Yeah, so located in Western North Carolina, Brevard, North Carolina specifically, we have just an absolute ton of public land around here. And so we try and utilize that as much as we can um, in all sorts of ways, depending on the season. So, you know, we've got um, permits in almost all of our state and national forests around here. And we have many. Our county, Transylvania County, is more public land than it is private land, which oh, cool. is super, yeah, super cool. So we're, we're using as much of that as we can. Um, one of the regular things that a lot of guests do with me and come for is our hiking program. You know, we have hikes uh, four or five times a week, sometimes six times a week, just depending on the what's going on during the week. Uh, we offer full outdoor experiences and excursions of all various kinds mm-hmm. during the summer. A lot of water sports stuff, paddleboarding, kayaking, tubing, all the fun river stuff, uh, cold water, waterfall slides, <laughs> everything in between. Um, you know, we've got horseback riding. We do things like zip lining. Uh, if you can do it in the mountains here, we do it. We, you know, those destination hikes are waterfall and mountaintop hikes and beautiful uh nature trail hikes where I'm teaching you about the plants. Uh, We got wildflower season going on, um, teaching you about the wildflowers that are out there. Um, You know, we're we're doing all this for a deeper connection to nature, uh, stress management benefits, um, a lot of fitness benefits in there too. You know, you're getting your heart rate up when you're going up to the top of a mountain and uh, you get that serotonin dopamine when you see that beautiful view. Um, And it's cool. I get to see people uh, get outside of the gym. I get to see them uh, train Mm -hmm. to be outside as well. I get to give people their first outdoor hike experience often. I I get that a lot. Uh, First Western North Carolina experience. Or I get super advanced folks that, uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're looking to see something beautiful and challenge themselves. And so I get the the full spectrum of folks that want to get outside for many different reasons. I think one of the beautiful things about the way that we do recreation and the way that you specifically do it is making sure that our guests find the joy in movement. And Mm -hmm. so I know that we have guests who come to us who, you know, maybe movement is is not a regular part of their lives, but they want it to be. And they learn, especially from you, you know what, if you're not a gym person, you can go out and you can do a hike and you can move your body and you can get the same benefits. And it's all about the joy of that. Yeah, I mean, the gym can be daunting. The Mm -hmm. weights can be intimidating. The movement practices can be intimidating. And even if you have an injury of some some kind, if you can get out and walk, you can get out and move in nature. And it's its own version of of fitness. And uh, it's it it can be a lot less intimidating for folks. And I think that that's very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you mentioned, like, training outside the gym. Like, I know a lot of people, including me, like, motivation sometimes to go to the gym is so I'm more like active and better when I'm outside. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like able to do those hikes and move the way I want to move. So kind of using the gym as a motivator for when you go out and do those hikes. Yeah. You can row your raft better. (laughs) You know, it's not as daunting getting down or, you know, that hill doesn't feel as hard next time you walk up it. uh, You can get there faster if you wanted to. Um, Yeah. It's great. So Kirsten over at young adult, what does recreation and adventure look like for the guests that you see? Um, similar to a lot of what Alan said, um, I think the biggest difference is when dealing with a younger population, most of our guests, our guests ages range, in case you all don't know, is 18 to 30 is the, our age range, but I would say our typical age is around 22, 23. Um, a lot of these kids are just out of college or they're like trying to figure out life and maybe like when you're in college, you know, you walk in anywhere, you know, everyone there. 
But once you leave college, it's hard to find that friend group, like out in that real that out in the real world, I guess. Um, and recreation is a great way to find a friend group. Mm. So we talk a lot about like um, every town, everywhere in America has a recreations department, and those recreation departments have adult rec leagues. So like, mm -hmm. how do you join these rec leagues? Like, you like soccer? Let's join this adult soccer league. You like board games? Let's find you a board game club that mm -hmm. meets up once a week and things like that. Because there's so many different types of rec, and so like. By doing that, you're automatically going to be around a group of people who probably have similar beliefs as you, who have similar interests. So it's a great way to build a community, and our guest, and everyone's looking for that community. Mm -hmm. And through recreation, it's a great way to find and build that community. So that's like the big thing we talk about with rec. But we also like every week we have our rec days are on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and we try to mix it up. Tuesday, I kind of have as an advanced rec day, so we spend out all day. We'll go caving uh, we start caving um Fun. we go kayaking hiking like it's like a big rec day all day and then thursday try to make it like a little bit more welcoming for everyone so maybe we'll go last week we went to the arcade had a great time had a big air hockey tournament um just try to show them all the different types over the winter we went to the nutcracker ballet in greenville because that's also rec that's great um so just showing them that there's it doesn't have to be straight outdoor adventure. It can be a mix of everything. Um, because there are three pillars in rec we talk about, which is cognitive, physical, and social. <laughs> um, cognitive, you know, is like more like puzzles, like challenging mm -hmm. the brain. Um, physical, you know, like hiking, all that outdoor stuff. Yeah. And social, like joining a rec league, like soccer or basketball or something. Pickleball. Pickleball. Th they love pickleball. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, you can thank Evan for that. He... Brings the hype around pickleball. <laughs> he <laughs> was, he's good too. He's Lis so good. Listeners, if you don't know, we have three pickleball courts here at Skyterra that our young adults use as well. Pickleball is a big part of our program. Yeah, a huge part of outdoor mm -hmm. recreation. Yeah. Shout out to, to Sue. Sue is our pickleball founder <laughs> lover. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kirsten, what's the rec home plan? Um, so, our rec home plan is where I'll sit down individually with each um, guest before they leave and We'll talk about like where they're from, um, what their interests are, and we'll create a plan for them. We'll sign them up for things before they leave. So maybe um, I actually had a guest who wanted more than anything to skydive. And a few oh. months ago, um, she sent me pictures of her and her skydiving lessons. Oh, yes. No way. Yeah. It's in, when her parents came to visit, she actually told them that the rec person said the only thing to do in this area is skydive because she wanted to go skydive. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I have another guest who sent pictures of them learning to surf, like, yeah. um, just like getting out there. Another one, a girl, so it was, um, we had one guest who hated hiking so much, but while she was here, learned that she actually loves hiking and she sent me a message the other day that she's planning a hiking trip for her and her friends in Moab over spring break. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Great. So just like learning like things they want to learn to try, um, mm -hmm. to talk a lot about like challenge by choice and like trying new things, like. Life's boring if you're always doing the same thing. Like, we are humans. We need to challenge ourselves. We need to stay on our toes. So try new things. Worst thing is you learn that you hate it. <laughs> yeah, that's so a good point. So yeah. that's kind of we build the rec home plan around. Is like, what you want to do? What are some things you want to try? Um, we'll give them, like, links of where that's at in their area. Mm -hmm. Sign up, Make them sign up for at least two things. <laughs> I don't make them. I just challenge them. Sign up for two things, I should say. <laughs> and, yeah, we go from there. And. Oh, and so like that way when they go home, they have things in place to keep them moving. Yeah. Because yeah. when you wake up in the morning, you can like think, oh, I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go to work. I go to the bank. But then you remember like, oh, I actually have my kickball league tonight. Yes. It's going to get you out of bed. You're going to be excited because yeah. you have that little light in the tunnel after you do all the stupid adult things. With <laughs> kickball. So like trying to like phase it in that way. Yeah. You need these little lights. Yeah. The joy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next question, Alan, I'm going to give to you first only because Skyterra started first. Okay. <laughs> um, and, so, and I think it'll be relevant to this. So yeah. this is an opinion question. So, Alan, in your opinion, why is recreation and adventure one of our five pillars of wellness? And listeners, just to give you some background, both Skyterra and Skyterra Young Adult are founded on the same five pillars. And I'm going to tell you what those are. The first one is self-care and stress management. And under that, definitely falls sleep. The second is fitness and mobility. The third is culinary and nutrition. 
The fourth is yoga and mindfulness. And then, of course, last but definitely not least is our recreation and adventure. So, Alan, in your opinion, why is recreation and adventure one of our pillars? You know, I think Kirsten did a good job of kind of uh, touching on this a little bit, that it, it really, the outdoor recreation piece or just recreation in general really plays towards the social aspect of our human nature, plays towards that cognitive and the physical. Mm-hmm. I really, you know, you can't say it much better than that. You, Depending on what you're doing, you can get benefit in all three of those within our recreation pillar. Being happier outside is is a thing. If you've never felt that, getting outside in the sunshine after being inside all day, um, that natural light, it plays to your cortisol levels, that stress hormone, it lowers it. I bet the, you feel that when you leave this room with this fluorescent light. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. We get out of this podcast booth and we go stand outside for a second. We feel that. You yes, know? we do. That's that That's that cognitive piece. It's huge. I felt that right when I walked in. I'm like, man, that's a bright for us. <laughs> bright in a, in a very padded, padded, small, hot room, right? Um, you know, you, you have the the also cognitive of self-esteem. You're building that, that self-esteem while lowering that stress that – you can do hard things that um, you're using all five of your senses when you're doing any th- recreational piece. You know, that that sense of smell, taste, touch, hearing, um, sight, all the things you see, it, it all plays a role in it. Um, we we push a lot on sleep here yeah. as well. Uh, sleep's a, a sh- kind of its own piece. It's a, it's a big part of uh, what we educate on here. And You know, even the science shows that just 10, 15 minutes outside, especially first thing in the morning when that sun is a specific color at a specific level entering your eye, helps with your sleep, which Mm -hmm. helps with your stress, which helps with your recovery. You know, there's there's a lot of pieces to that. Um, I could go on and on. Uh, I think it it helps us push our limitations in a lot of ways. Uh, I meet a lot of guests that it helps uh, them get back to their roots. They haven't done things like this in a long time, and they find a a youthful sense of joy uh, that maybe they haven't seen in a long time, which also carries over their family members. And I think that that's beautiful. I have quite a few stories behind that. Um, Can I ask you a question, Alan? Yeah. Just if you, we've talked about our location before. So Western North Carolina in the mountains, um, this location seems in my biased opinion, perfect for getting outside and having all of these adventure opportunities. Um, A few episodes ago, we had on Tom Depsey from Sylvan Sport talking Mm -hmm. about the North Carolina Recreation Coalition and his work in trying to bring outdoor opportunities to as many people in the state and the country as possible. What do you think about this location? I know it was chosen for a reason. What, What is it about this location you think that is just so special? God, <laughs> that is that is a great question. I, if you caught it earlier, I, I mentioned that we have more public land in our Transylvania mm-hmm. County, which is where Brevard lives at. Um, we have more public than privately owned land, right? That public land is undeveloped and natural and wild. And I think that that's one of the big draws that gets people here mm-hmm. and makes people stay, um, that opportunity. But they find so much more because the type of person that, spends time in a place like this and they want to live a certain type of lifestyle. And I, I would say that's why I live here. Mm -hmm. Kirsten, that's probably, would you agree? That's why you live here. When I came here to work for one summer to guide, I was just planning on saying for one summer, I'm like, there's no way I'm ever going to live in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Like I also didn't really think about there was them being mountains in North Carolina. I'm always like North Carolina, the beach. Hmm. So I'm like, like I'm still shocked five years later that I'm still here. I always thought I would end up back out West or, back in the Adirondacks or somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's just something special about this area, like the water, the Mm. mountains, it just, especially in the fall. I think the fall keeps me here more than anything. It's my favorite time of year here. Oh, especially the smell of the fall here. Like, I never want to go inside in the fall. So Kirsten, let me turn this over to you. In your opinion, why do you think uh, recreation and adventure is a pillar at Young Adult? Kind of knowing this is what we had established for Skyterra. Mm-hmm. Young Adult came along after Skyterra had been open, and we knew that it was going to be a very important part of that program as well. Why? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the first thing I like to always show guests is the wellness wheel um, and show them that recreation has just a big slice of a pie as mental health, as physical health and everything else. Because I think a lot of people look in the mindset that rec isn't as important when it's just as important. And I think it's 
The reason for that is recreation and leisure. So, like, your leisure time is the only – so it's, like, after you go to work, school, or whatever, and do all the things you have to do, that time that remains is your leisure time. Hmm. And what you do with that leisure time really matters. Mm-hmm. So if you just go home and you lay on the couch, like, that's not – doing anything for you like doing something the time that you enjoy that's the only time in your life that's truly about you mm. and what you want to do and you should be selfish with that time like because that's the thing that's going to keep you keep you moving it's going to yeah. keep you going like if you're just like had a bad day at work and you lay on the couch you're just gonna be laying and all that stress and all that where if you just take like alan said 10 15 minutes and go outside and walk or do something a lot of the stuff that's been that was like weighing on you mm. you're going to forget on I believe 75% of it. And you're like, what was I mad about again? And you're just going to feel so much better. Mm. So like, that's why I say like leisure as time with like the recreation plan is like sign up for things, like put little nuggets through your week. Cause once you have that, you're going to be so much more committed to going, like knowing like, Oh, I have this. I need to go. And you're just going to feel so much better. Yeah. There was actually a study done a few years back. I don't remember the name of the study, um, but doing, um, just two sports a week. So saying you play pickleball once a, once a week or twice a week or something else, your stress level and anxiety will lower by 35% just by participating wow, 35%. in 35 35% just by participating in something you enjoy like that twice a week. It lowers that cortisol level yeah. almost instantly. So um, I think, cause I think a lot of people also in today's world get caught up in that hustle mentality where mm-hmm. if, I have time to go play pickleball, then I'm not working as hard as I need to. Yeah. It's like, no, by making time to play pickleball, you're actually going to be more effective in work. You'll be more effective in your life because you're doing something you enjoy for yourself, which is going to make you a happier person. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the point of life, right? We all just want to be happy. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. And there's a reason why people plan to come on their vacations also to come here. Yeah. To get outside and do things they love. Like... So I think I stress a lot that hustle mentality because I think it's easy for younger people to also get really caught up in that. Also older people. Yeah. Like, because I get here all the time like, oh, I don't have time for that. It's like, no, you do have time. Let's make time. Yeah. Let's make time. Yeah. Okay, Kirsten, I'm going to ask you this next question first. So when guests first arrive at Skyterra Young Adult, I know this is going to be different for everybody, but just in general, what is their relationship like with the outdoors? Um, it's all over the place. We get some who are like really into the outdoors or like maybe group going to summer camp and they used to do lots of outdoors. We have some who've never been on a hike before. Like, like I'm sure like, I'm sure like just here at wellness, mm-hmm. it's all over the place. Yeah. Cause everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's why I think we try to like introduce a lot of different types of rec. Well, it's not always just outdoor while we also try to do like art and music and other things as well. Because everyone's rec is different, yeah. and we want everyone to try different things. Like, be diverse in your rec experience. I personally, this past year, um, made a resolution, this is like for 2023, that I'm going to try to find a new hobby that's not outdoor-related. Hmm. I try to paint by numbers. Horrible. Not the hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like, took everything I had to finish it, and, I quick, and like, I knew going into it, I probably wasn't going to like it, but I'm like, oh, I'm going to try What it. if you, had, did you do it outside? <laughs> I tried, but then the wind kept blowing. Oh, the okay. Went sure. everywhere. <laughs> 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 Made me more stressed. Okay. Um, I got an Animal House puzzle. Really hated it. I am not a puzzle person. <laughs> oh. You see, it seems like you need a hobby that you're moving for. I think I do. I think sitting there is driving me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so every making it, trying it out, do different things, and challenge yourself. Like even if you don't think you're gonna like it, try it. And I think people underestimate themselves often as well, like mm-hmm. thinking they can't hike or they can't do these things. Mm-hmm. There's in this area we're lucky, like DuPont has a lot of really easy beginner hikes. Yeah. Pisco has a lot of really big challenging hikes. So like, let's try this easy hike first. Let's just get outside on a wider trail. Just walk in nature. And as you start feeling more comfortable with that, let's progress it. Mm-hmm. Like you don't ha- and you don't have to like hiking. I sometimes don't like hiking <laughs> it's okay um i love mountain biking so we do we go mountain biking quite a bit and we can find a lot of especially like our guys on campus that's like been their favorite mm. thing like they want to go mountain biking all the time that's cool. so finding new ways like some people may really like that adrenaline but maybe they don't like the maybe they don't like hiking because it's just too boring for them sure so just yeah. trying to find that 
what's your balance? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay, Alan, new question for you. What do you see in guests who haven't spent time outdoors after they've been on our campus? Yeah, I automatically want to go to like all of my success stories, <laughs> you know? Yes. At least what I consider success stories and that they've, uh, a lot of guests find a, a newfound confidence and independence. Um, you know, I like that, the confidence independent piece. Yeah. Thinking they can't do it and then like they're doing it. Even if it's just joining a group of, mm -hmm. of folks back home to do something like you were talking about, I think that that is tremendous and I get to hear it all the time. I, I get the pleasure of occasionally getting a card in the mail or an mm. email when a guest is home or often they come back and they start talking to me about what they started doing after they left. And, you know, maybe it's just because it's what I do, but I don't hear them uh, bragging about going to the gym. I hear them mm. bragging about um, the group that they joined, the pickleball league, the hiking group that they found. And, and or just doing things that they didn't think that they could or that they didn't have the confidence to do before, like going on a small walk by themselves and being able to navigate a trail. Mm. Um, being a, one, one of my favorite things is uh, when, when they come back and they start to tell me about how it's affected their family as well. Um, one gentleman in specific grew up being outside, took a job right out of uh, a very high-end college and was working and has worked and does work at a very high level in a very big company that I can't name. <laughs> oh. And he did that for so long and got away from his roots. And when he started having his kids, it was something that weighed really heavy on him mm -hmm. that he wanted to bring his youthful outdoor experiences that shaped the type of person that he was to his kids. And just coming here to find some clarity for himself, he found that for his family as well. And that I got it. That was one of those cards that I got in the mail. And Special. I I keep all the cards that I get, but I hold ones like that very dear um, in the difference that it's made in those people's lives. And I could go on and on. I've had guests that didn't have the confidence to lift a slam ball, and then all of a sudden they're hiking Kilimanjaro. You oh, know, wow. um, that's no. That's no joke. Yeah, I know. Uh, and and the stories go on and on, you know. I think that that's my my favorite part of this whole deal. Because we're, we're changing lives. Mm. I agree with Alan on that. Like, when I get messages of, like, just seeing, like, like I said, the girls skydiving and the other one, like, my lab, it's like, wow, like, I actually yeah. did something. Yeah. Like, that's pretty, it's a cool feeling. Yep. Okay. Last question. Kirsten, I'm going to start with you. What is the one thing that you want listeners to do after listening to this podcast? Um, I think just anything about their own rec experience, like maybe think about what did you like to do when you were a kid mm -hmm. and maybe start from there. Um, don't think that like, oh, well, you need to be at this fitness level to do something like you can get outside today if you want. It can be as simple as going to a park. A park is a great green space just to start. Um. Maybe it's learn to play the guitar. Like, yeah. don't be afraid to challenge yourself or look like a fool. Like, or everyone was a beginner at some point. Yes. And that's okay. Being a beginner is awesome. It's fun to learn new things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, so I say just get out there. Um, and also be selfish with your leisure time. Your leisure time is about you. And if you're always making about other people, like, I mean, what are you doing for yourself? Like, or at least your time is to do things for ourselves so we can stay happy and stay the best person we can be for the people in our lives mm -hmm. and for ourselves. So I love that. Don't be afraid and have fun. Have fun. Life's about having fun. It's not about work. It's not about like cleaning your house. It's about having fun too. Yes. So, Can't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Dream big. <laughs> Dream big. <laughs> Alan, what is the one thing you want listeners to do today? Yeah, I echo Kirsten. I, if I had to boil it down to one thing is uh, think about your life account of fun. Mm. Um, I talk about this in one of my classes, but just fun, synonym, joy. What brings you joy? What do you consider to be fun? I need you to take an account of um, how has that been going? Have you been investing time in that thing? If you haven't, why have you not? If you have but haven't been fulfilled, think about looking at something new. Um, and if you haven't at the same time, think about what used to bring you joy, yeah. what what you do consider fun. And I mean selfish fun. I don't mean 
fun that brings joy to other people yes. around you. Mm-hmm. I think we're uh, often givers or caregivers and we, we do things for others. I'm talking about being selfish here. And if you can take a, an account of that and even just give it a rating, one to five, how, how have I been doing? One, I haven't been doing very good. Five, I feel like I've been doing the best I can. And if you're not at a five or you're not at a four, maybe think about what could be one step, one mm-hmm. percent better, one step closer to getting that to that four, that five, adding something new, trying something new, making yourself look like a fool <laughs> and doing something fun um, and finding that joy again. Well, you inspired me both. What are you, you going to do today that's selfish fun? Well, um, mm. I don't know if it's going to be today, but <laughs> I have been, um, you know, I'm going to say this on the air and now I'm going to really hold myself accountable. This is very selfish. I am going to, I've been thinking about taking sailboat lessons huh? and there's a place near me in Boston that offers sailing lessons this summer. I'm going to sign up. Wow. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to get on the computer and sign <laughs> you up right now. Is it an online thing that we can do? I'll pull it up. Is it like a little sunfish boat? Let's, yep. Uh, I had see. sunfish growing up. Sailing's the best. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sailing you should do it, lessons. Rachel. I can see it. Yeah, I'm Googling it right now. Folks. Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. You will be signed up at the end of today. Oh, excellent. I will text you both. I will send a picture just like Kirsten did of her flat tire to bring this full circle. We'll try. Hey, it's not true unless there's a picture. Okay. Yeah, there you go. True. We'll try and post that on our social media. Yes. Sailing. Yes. I love that yeah. thank you both this has been so fun i just really am so grateful for what both of you give to our guests both at skyterra and skyterra young adult um you are both treasures to our our business and especially to our guests thank you for your expertise and for your time today thank you thanks rachel bye thank listeners you. the inspired intentions podcast is a production of skyterra wellness retreat special thanks to our executive producer alan broyhill Send us your questions and comments to inspiredintentions at skaterrawellness.com. Subscribe on iTunes and everywhere podcasts can be found. If someone you know might benefit from this podcast, share Inspired Intentions with them and give us a five-star rating. Join us next week as we cut through the unrealistic noise on diets and fitness and show you how healthy living fits seamlessly into your already busy life. Thanks for listening.